respect to him as he's preaching, I believe you'll get more out of it. Amen. Amen. So would you encourage him as he comes, say, Minister Levi, preach the word. Minister Levi, preach the word. Minister Levi, preach the word. being March Madness, man, Pat to say we got to wear basketball stuff. I want to just be part of the crew that's worth some basketball. It's like a dress on me for real, so, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, praise God anyway. Praise God. Um, first and foremost, I want to just thank Pastor Jay and, uh, and First Lady Barney. Uh, I want to thank y'all just allowing me to preach over your children, over your congregation, uh, for trusting me to do this. Uh, so I want to thank y'all. And uh, I do look up to y'all, too, as well. Like I told your father earlier, you know, y'all are mentors of mine, too. Y'all my mom and my dad, you know, too. So I, pray, I praise y'all, and I thank y'all for that. All right. Uh, today, we're going to be preaching from uh, Psalms 62 and 8. Okay? The word goes as forth. Trust in him at all times. Please have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Relax. Relax. Uh, okay, so trust in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Hallelujah. First, Father God, I want to come to you, Father God, as humble as I can, Lord. I want to thank you, Father God, once again for this day, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for allowing me to preach over your children, Father God. And I ask you, Lord, to decrease me 100%, Father God, while you increase 100%, Lord. Father God, allow me to hide behind the cross, Father God. Whatever word you need me to go across this pulpit, Father God, let it be done right now in the name of Jesus. And let that word pierce the minds, the bodies, the souls, the spirits of your children right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Father God. There's many blessings. In Jesus' name we'll always pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I haven't been up in this pulpit in a long time. Um. Pastor usually needs, well, Pastor needs his breaks, just being truthful. He does a lot, including preaching, and he needs his breaks, correct? So, Paul, though, is Paul that breaks, that break involves him asking his minister to step up and preach and deliver a word, okay? Uh, the last few times, a couple times, would not pastor asked minister to do so, but at that time, I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it. Uh, reason being is because at that time, uh, God had my family and I uh, going through some processes, amen, which actually is going to help me to deliver this word today. Amen, amen. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let me, let me hear everybody say, trust the process. Say it again. Trust the process. Trust the process. Hallelujah. That's the topic of this sermon today, God. It's trust the process. Okay. So, okay. Trusting God's process requires consistent reliance on him every, in every situation. This verse alone exhorts us to trust in God at all times by pouring out our hearts to him. But, but we, as a, as a whole, get caught up in our selfish ways at times when it comes to God. What I mean by that, which truthfully, honestly, I've done it. I'm pretty sure we all have done it. Or we might have felt this way. Or we might have said this. I've said it plenty of times. What am I talking about? I'll let you know. What we say to God. We want our prayers right now, Lord. Correct? 
See, but sometimes what happens is we wish God was like a vending machine. What, what, what I mean by the vending machine, I, I explain to you. See, what happens is we get our little, we get our little coins. We, we get our little dollars. We go to the vending machine, right? We put our little coins in there, the little dollars in there and whatnot. Now, in the vending machine, you look over here to, at what you are requesting for right here, right? Your merchandise. Now, over here, you have the little buttons that identifies what this is over here, what you're getting, right? So, over here, you have like the little letter, the little number up under what you want. And over here, you got the little letter and the little number that identifies this, what you, prefer, what you were requesting for right here, correct? So, what happens is you press that button. And then what happens is what you just requested for drops down to the bottom of the, of the vending machine. So, you automatically get down there and you get what you done uh, requested for, correct? Immediately. See, we treat our prayers towards God the exact same way. We want to go to God and we want to pray to God and we want to send our prayers up immediately and we want our blessing to come right back down immediately, correct? <laughs> but let, let's be real. Let, let's be real. We all know it doesn't work that way. See, God has a plan, a path, and a purpose for each of our lives. It all leads us to our destiny. He also has a process to get us ready for that destiny. Amen. So, so remember what I said that he sent my family, he had me and my family going through some processes earlier, correct? This is one of the processes that he had us going through. I want you, I used to work at FedEx Freight. I used to drive trucks for a living. And, uh, you know, uh, me and being a parent, us being parents, I'm sure y'all can definitely relate. Us being parents, we have children, we have children, we have responsibilities, we have bills that need to be paid, correct? So naturally, we always want to better ourselves for our family, correct? So don't get me wrong, FedEx Freight was a great job. Driving trucks is a great career move. It's, it's great. It was good. Money was good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I always wanted to, I also want to better myself for my family, okay? So now, currently, I work at uh, Spire, the gas company. But before I get to that point, God had me going through this process. So I was filling out, trying to get a new job. Mind you, Spy wasn't even open yet. So I'm wanting to leave this job. But in the midst of me trying to leave FedEx, additional things happened. What happened? I'm glad you asked. You all are a great class. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I then got accused of doing something that I did not do, okay? And it got me to the, and, and from there, they, they suspended me for a week, a week or two without pay, okay? And then from there, I'm just sitting there at home, I'm depressed, I'm looking at my wife going to work, and I'm just sad, I'm hurting, like I can't even provide for my family because of this, which is something I didn't do. But then it came along, they called me like, Levi, you can go ahead, you can come on back to work. Because you, you, you was innocent. I know I was innocent. I told you I was innocent. Okay, I know this. Okay, so from there, I had to deal with something that I never even dealt with before, anxiety issues. Okay, um, so then I go back to work. He, he humbled me, and I had to trust God's process, the process for me to go back to work. I'm going to go back to work. Okay, but mind you, before he did all that, I was dealing with guys that I went to work with that was talking behind my back at the time when I was going through this, uh, this dog in me. And then my managers and bosses, they humiliated me. They put my picture all over the dog on job, talking about some. And if he comes on the scene, call the police immediately. Humiliated me, okay? But need to be, need to be said. Now, now look at where he has me at now. I'm in a new job. I have better hours and I'm getting paid more money. So I'm going to venture off real quick to say this. We brothers and sisters in Christ, we're in the same neighborhood. When your brother say he getting blessed, or your sister say he, she getting blessed, that means that he is in the neighborhood. He is in the same neighborhood that you're in. So it means her blessing coming, or his blessings coming, that means yours coming right along with it. So don't look. So whatever you've been praying for, whatever you've been asking for, I don't care if it's freeing your finances up, a new occupation, whatever business you've been trying to get into, get it done. 
Get it done because he's coming. He's in the room. He's in the field of blessing you and getting you started. Trust this process. Glory be to God. Um, so back to what I was saying really quick here. So, excuse me. Psalm 105 and 19 states this. Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. Okay, before being blessed by God to the to before being blessed by God to be the second in command, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery into Egypt, where he ended up incarcerated. See, God gave Joseph dreams to show him that his destiny would be what his destiny would be. But Joseph wasn't ready to live it out just yet. See, before he could reach Time out. Hold, hold on, hold on, time out, because Pastor, they missed it again. They, they, they missed it again. The word yet. Yeah. They, they, yeah, don't worry. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Yet. Just remember that word yet, okay? Remember yet. Just remember that. So back to before he could reach his destiny, God had to shape, mold, and refine Joseph's character. Yeah. Just like Joseph, we can, be, we can have big dreams yeah. and the destiny God has planned for us. And just like Joseph, most of us use, most of us are not ready for those dreams to be fulfilled yet. See, the reason why I say that was a praise moment when we say yet is because the power of the word yet. Philippians 3 and 12 state this. I'm not there yet, nor have I become perfect, but I am charging on to gain anything and everything the anointed one Jesus has in store for me, and nothing will stand in my way because he has grabbed me and won't let me go. So when I say yet, when I say yet, see, yet does not mean never, okay? See, what happens is whatever you're praying for, like I said, whatever you're praying for, whatever you've been asking God for, God didn't say he would never bless you with what you've been praying for. He just said not Yet. That means that it is going to come to pass. Amen. See, pastor has been preaching for this is the year of free. Amen. So what you need to do is thank God and thank God for the word yet. Because think about this. Think about what you've been doing. Do we deserve what we've been praying God for, praising God for, and asking God for? Do we deserve it? He can easily and have well in his rights to say never. But he said not yet. So continue praising him. You've been asking for finances. You've been wanting that new job. You've been wanting that business to get going. You've been looking for more transportation. Thank God for yet. Thank God for yet because it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. How Pastor Jay. Pastor Jay. You've been doing, you've been, you, you have a lot planned. You, you have a lot planned. Not yet. You have a lot planned, and, 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 and you're doing God's will the way that he wants you to do his will. Trust the process. Because what he has for you and your wife's destiny, it's going to benefit a plethora of people. Glory be to God. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Carrie and, and your wife, your, your girl. <laughs> I'm speaking up to a sister. You and your wife, huh? You, you and your wife. Y'all are a powerful couple. Let them lead. Don't go to your process. Because this is what you're doing. God right there, you're going over here. God's process. He's going to use y'all in a big way. Y'all are a powerful couple, man. Trust the process, brother. It's hard. Never said it was easy. But he got you. He got you. Glory. Glory. See, Paul realized that he, like Joseph, was in God's training process and had not arrived at his ultimate destination. Yet, in fact, so many great men and women of the Bible had to trust the process of God getting them ready for their destiny. One in particular. Moses did not have the humility to lead the entire Israelite nation. Exodus 3.11 states this, Who am I to confront Pharaoh and lead Israel's children out of Egypt? Yet, 
Didn't Moses lead Israel's, his children out? Uh, didn't he lead them? Didn't he? Okay, let's, let's go to another one, Esther. Didn't have the courage she needed to save her people. Yet, Esther 4.16 states this, In preparation for my audience with the king, do this. Gather together all the Jews in Susa and fast and pray for me. Intercede for me for three days and nights, asking from all food and drinks. My maids and I will join you in this time, and after three days, I will go into the king and plead my people's case, even though it means breaking the law. And if I die, then I die. See, the faith is in the word. Say it again. The faith is in the word. Yet. Yet. All right. Glory be to God. Y'all still doing good. Stay woke with me now. Stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. All right. All right. All right. (laughs) See, you and I are no different. Just being truthful. I often want to give up on dreams that God has put in my heart. Just being truthful. It's been true. It happens. Yes. Thank you, First Lady. It happens. Uh, because what I see, I see all of my inadequacies, my sins, and my failures. See, those difficulties just reveal that I have to trust God's process and let him change me. Okay? The process is different for each of us. Even for our kids, if we're parents, I need to speak to the women real quick, real quick, real quick. You all are not failures. You you all have never failed your children. You all have never failed your children. You all work hard. Y'all take care of your families. You take care of your husbands if you're married. You take a lot lot of stuff, a lot of responsibilities within your households. What you're doing, God sees it, and God knows what you're doing, and he commends you. You are doing exactly what God wants you all to do. See, what's going on with this child is... Jesus is God's process. It's God's process. So allow God to do what he's doing with this process with your child. And you all need to do one thing. Continue doing what you're doing. You all are not fair. You know I've never failed your children at one time. You work too hard to, to think that. I would say that, I say it's right now with the pulpit. That is the devil, and he's a lie, and the truth ain't in him. Okay? Praise God. So, the process, once again, like I said, so sometimes the process includes difficulty, disappointment, and heartbreak. Other times it involves opportunities and successes. All of it is part of God's process. And if we just trust him, we learn and we grow. See, in order to learn and we grow, we have to use the tools that God is giving us. What are those tools? Pray. Get in your word and be around the body of Christ. Once again, I say, pray. Get in your word. Be around the body of Christ. Okay? See, what happens is when you're praying, you're having that conversation with God. You're not praying putting in what you want and walk away. See, you're praying and you're having a conversation with God, the meaning that God is telling you some things too, correct? Okay, meaning when you get in your word, the word is telling you things as well, okay? So when God sends you through that process and you're praying and in your word and around the body of Christ, when you go through that process, your process won't be as hard. It'll be easier for you. I never said it's going to be just the easiest thing ever because God never said this was supposed to be an easy walk. But I guarantee you, if you go through it by yourself, you won't make it through that process. Why not have a Lord and Savior that has never lost a battle and have him hold on to you and grab you and take you through that process so you won't be by yourself? 
He will fight the battle for you. He will fight through that process for you. You will make it. You will never fail because he can't fail. He, he, if he tried to fail, he can't fail. God is just that good. And that also shows, that also tells me something else. That tells me that he loves us just that much. God's good. He loves you more than you love yourself. And I can guarantee that your process will never be better than God's process. It's not going to happen. It's not possible. Hallelujah. Which brings me to my first point. Let go of the past. Brothers and sisters, in, in, in Psalms, I'm sorry, now Philippians 3 and 13. Brothers and sisters, as I said, I know I have not arrived. But there's one thing I am doing. I'm leaving my old life behind, putting everything on the line for this mission. See, in Philippians 3, Paul talks about the opportunity we have, have, we all have spiritually to really leave our old life behind. In fact, being close to God requires that we learn to let go of our past. See, Philippians 3 and 8 states this. To truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all of my boasting and garbage heap aside. Okay? I tell you all this. I, I, didn't, I didn't grow up in church. Tell the truth, shame the devil. I didn't. I didn't care to go to church. I didn't want to go to church. Uh, but look at what God has me now. <laughs> Trust in God's process. <laughs> um, in saying this, I'm saying I, I grew up, I grew up on the west. Side. I grew up on Tadoshan and Hamilton, a uh, very rough part of St. Louis. Um, and I grew up around a lot of guys and we done a lot of mischief, doing things we had no business doing. Um, whatever they did, I did. Whatever I did, they did. Uh, and then my parents, we moved over to North Side where I was. I was hanging out in Walnut Park area a lot. And the same thing, I grew up with a lot of those guys, and whatever they did, I did. Whatever they did, whatever I did, they did. Uh, but it comes a point, it comes a point in time where we get older and mature and want to do better and want to go on the right straight and narrow, correct? And, and that was God's process for me. We got older, I want to mature, I want to better my life and stop doing things I had no business doing. So, I, my process was this way. So, God, come, I'm coming this way. I'm coming this way. I'm coming this way. But I'm looking back. Because, once again, like I said, me and my friends, whatever they did, I did, whatever I did, they did. So, I'm trying to pull them along. But, let me tell you this. My process is my process. Okay? They process is their process. See, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to move in, God, in God's process, but I'm not forgetting about my past. Amen. See, when we fail to let go of our past, we end up carrying too many burdens and too much baggage, and it, and it prohibits us from having the faith to change and grow. One of the best things about God is that he frees us from our past so we can start new. That's confirmation right there. That's because past has been preaching free this year. You will be free from whatever you've been praying for. You will be free from whatever you've been praying for. So when you, got here, when you start praying and you're praying to God, don't think it's not, it's just hitting the ceiling and coming down. It's, it's up there. He has not forgot about you. You're just not ready for it yet. But like I said, yet. But he has you. He ain't forgot about you. Why, I, 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 I tell the truth. I wanna, if I want to pray something, send something up to God, and I know he still has me. He ain't forgot about me. That means that as I'm walking through this process, he's still walking with me. He ain't forgot about me yet. But what if you don't send some, a prayer up there and it hit the bloop and it came right back down? He ain't get that prayer. You lonely. You by yourself because then you made it to him. That means you all the way wrong. Something ain't right. Amen. <laughs> praise, praise God. For real. So thank God for yet. Thank God for the process. The process 
is where you want to be. You want to be in God's process. You don't want to be in your own process. Amen. Glory be to God. So what are some of the burdens that we need to let go of so we can grow? I'm glad you asked. Glad you asked. Uh, Discouragement. This is when loss and disappointment has affected us and our faith is tired. We need to pray so we can specifically identify the discouragements we need to let go of. Amen? Another one is, hold on. So, after everything I say, it's going to come back to prayer. You need prayer. We need prayer. Amen? So, the second one is guilt. This is when our faith is blocked by the, sh- by the shame and sin. We need to pray and talk specifically about what is making us feel guilty so we can leave it all behind. The third one is indifference. This is when our faith is gone and we just don't care anymore. We need time for our God to see, to see he, excuse me, we need time with our God so he can reawaken our hearts. To care for people, for, to care for others, okay? And this, this is my favorite one. I don't, I don't know why, but it, it, it's my favorite one. Old paradigms. This is when our faith is outdated. And we then are trying to recreate the past rather than letting God build a new future for us. We need to pray visionary prayers and get in our Bibles to see what God is trying to build. So after everything that we go through, it it always comes back to prayer, which is a tool that we get from him. We can't go through a process with our prayer. Why? Because we don't, if we're trying to go through this process, if we're not praying, we're not talking to him, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what God's trying to do through us. We don't know what our our destination is because we're not talking to him. We're not having a communication problem. We're not communicating with him. We're not in our word to see what he has planned for us. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Get in our word. It's going to be easier to go through that process when we focus on his tools. Point two. Keep looking ahead. Philippians 3 and 14 state this. I am sprinting toward the only goal that counts, to cross the line, to win the prize, and to hear God's call to resurrection life found exclusively in Jesus the anointed. Not only do we need to let go of our past, but we need to keep looking ahead. See, I like what Paul said. Paul says he is sprinting toward the goal. And focusing forward. See, I, I'm going to tell you, I speak about me and my family a lot because I live with them every day and I kind of know them. So, 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 <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, we, ha- we are a track family. My, my wife ran track. I ran track. My oldest son, who I see back there, praise God, I see you here, man. Glad I got to see you. Uh, my oldest son ran track. And then uh, our three other babies, they run track right now as we speak. See, when, when you're training for track, it's a process that you have to go through when you train for track. Even it's a process the way you run in track, okay? So when you're running in track, you hear the dirt the whole time. You hear the dirt the whole time. You're focusing on the finish line, the goal. The prize, straight ahead, okay? So, so meaning, when you're here to there, you don't have time to look over there, to your left, to see what those runners are doing over there. You don't have time to look over there, to see what those runners are doing over there. You don't have time to look up in the crowd and wave at your people because they want to see what you're doing. Or up there, you don't want to look over there either. You don't have time for that, okay? We're looking straight ahead. By looking ahead, 
to where we wanted to go instead of at the other runners or the crowd, it would make our bodies move forward toward the finish line. In other words, our bodies would go toward whatever we are looking at. What are we looking at? The goal, the prize, our destiny, the process, God's process, straight ahead. See, I find this similarly, I have found that in life, when we are the most tired, it is when it is the most important to look ahead. See, it is tempting to want to look down. We look it down because we're looking down on ourselves. We're not what we think we're supposed to be. We're not think we are where what we want to be. Amen. Or we're looking at others. Lord, why are they getting blessed? And I'm not. Lord, I pay my tithe. Lord, I pray every day. Lord, I read my Bible. Why are they getting blessed and I'm not getting blessed? But let me tell you something. Your process is your process. Their process is their process. You don't know what they went through in order to get to where they are. Just like they don't know where you went or what you're going through to get to where you are. So, like I said, trust the process. Keep looking forward. Your process is right here. God is right there. Trust his goals. Trust his prize. Because what he has for you is far more greater than what you have for you. Praise God. God is good. What, what, see, what he has, like I said, what he has, what he wants to us to look at is him and the destiny he, plan, he has planned for us. Okay? Hebrews 12 and 2 state this. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 12 and 13 state this. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Glory be to God. See, which brings me to my third point. Excuse me. Develop an attitude to learn. Philippians 3, 15 through 16. All of us who are mature ought to think the same way about these matters. If you have a different attitude, then God will reveal this to you as well. For now, let's hold on to what we have been shown and keep in step with these teachings. Amen. Once again, talking about me. Tell the truth, shame the devil. I don't always have the best attitude when I have, when I am in the middle of God's process of training me. Many t- <laughs> it happens. Many times I have grown bitter, felt sorry for myself, or just been resistant to the whole thing of the, of the whole process. The older I get, the more I see that the importance of the developing an attitude to learn. I have so far to go in becoming who God had this, has destined me to be. But it's okay. It's okay that we are not there yet. Okay? See, God has both you and I in a process to become everything he wants us to, to be to fulfill our destiny. The key is always wanting to learn and not becoming fixed or entrenched in who we currently are. Learning to trust the process is all about having a disposition that is eager and happy about learning. Amen. Amen. So steps. So step, we, we can all grow and develop inner strength when we focus not on the formula, 
but rather on the experience of God's love changing us from the inside out. Okay? So in, this, in the Bible, it was, like I said earlier, it's men and a lot of women that had to trust God's process. Okay? Job had to trust God's process. Joseph had to trust God's process. Moses had to trust God's process. Esther had to trust God's process. The disciples had to trust God's process. But it's one man that also had to trust his process. This man died on the cross for you and I so that we may be sin free today. This man's name is Jesus. It was a process to get beat day in and day in and night. But he did it anyway. It was a process to get the hair ripped from his face. But yet, he took it anyway. It was a process to hold that cross and walk it up Calvary. But he did it anyway. It was a process to take nails in his hands. But he did it and took it anyway. It was a process to take nails in his feet. But he took it anyway. It was a process to get stabbed uh, in his side. But he took it anyway. It was a process to get a crown of thorns forced on his head. But he took it anyway. It was a process for him to raise up and say, God, forgive them for they not know what they are doing. But he did it anyway. It was a process for him then to say, Lord, it is done. But yet, he said it anyway. But I say, yet. I say, yet. Yet, in three days, in three days, he rose. I said, he rose. He rose with all power. He rose with all power in his hands. So when I say, whatever you've been praying for, my brother, Whatever you've been praying for, my sister, keep praying. Keep praying. You've been praying for finances. They're going to come to pass. You've been praying for that new job. Yet, yeah, it's going to come to pass. You've been praying for more transportation. Yet, yeah, it's going to come to pass. You've been praying for your help. Yet, yeah, it's going to come to pass. Because, because the God that we serve, he can never fail. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And remember, for a God that rose on the third day with all power in his hands, he can't fail. So it's good to pray to him. Because whatever you're praying for, you're walking like this toward the process, and you have him with you. He's strong. He's powerful. He ain't going to lose. He got you. He loves you. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. So when I say yet, Think about the process that you are going through. Think about God. Don't think about never, because never ain't going to come to pass. But yet is coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I want to send a prayer out to all of you on the sound of my voice real quick, and I'm out your way. I want to pray over all of you. Because... God's process, God never said the process was going to be easy. But this is something that I believe, and I'm going to share it with you really quick. I feel and I believe that everything that's worth doing is going to take hard work. Anything, if you noticed, that comes to you easy didn't take hard work nine times out of ten it's not worth it he never said it was going to be easy okay 
So that's what prayer, being in your word, and that phone number that you need for your brother or for your sister. When things are getting hard, you're getting tired, you're ready to give up, make that phone call. Make that phone call to your brother and sister. And they will speak with you. They will talk to you. They will pray with you. They're supposed to. Just being real. Okay? And let you all know, like Brother Kevin says, in two, I say two. He say in three. When three more come gather together, God's in the midst. He's there. He's there. Okay? Everybody bow your heads. God, we come before you today to ask for the strength and the courage to trust you more. We know that you are in control of our lives and that your plans for us are greater than anything we could ever imagine for ourselves. Yet, sometimes it's hard to let go of our own plans and desires and to trust that your way, your ways are better than ours. Please help us to surrender our control and to trust in your wisdom and guidance. Give us the faith to believe that you are working all things for our good. Even when we can't see it, help us, Lord, to remember your promises and to find hope and comfort in your love and faithfulness. When we are fearful or uncertain, please remind us of your presence and care. When we feel lost or overwhelmed, please guide us back to your path. When we face challenges or setbacks, please give us the strength and the perseverance to keep going, knowing that you are with us every step of the way. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. I repeat, thank you for your grace and your mercy. And for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. Help us to trust you more each day and to live our lives in a way that honors and glorifies you. This is in Jesus' name. We'll always pray. Amen. Come on and give God praise for the man of God.